Well, today's episode of South End United is focused on one of my favourite competitions. It's the magic of the FA Cup, and we travelled a championship opposition in the third round. We've also had a very big month in the National League, and a huge moment, arguably the biggest in a save on the pitch, from a returning emergency loan hero. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 13 of Saving South End with me, Daniel. We are back today with what is an unlucky number for some, but for us, it's an absolute treat. We go away to Championship Queen's Park Rangers in the FA Cup third round. A great tie financially, a great tie in terms of prestige, and hopefully one we can look forward to having in the league in the future, if this save goes the way we hope. When we drew them, they were bottom of the championship table. We'll find out how they've been getting on since, and of course update you on what is now a tight three-horse race at the top of the National League table. If you're looking forward to all of the news, then please do put a thumbs up on it. We've got a couple of goalkeepers on trial as we look to get someone in. We've got a couple of injuries as the festive period has taken its toll. But let's start with transfers and scheduling news, because for now, that is all that matters. We have had the return of an emergency loan hero, mainly because of one of those injuries you can see on the screen. Marcus Dakers unfortunately picked up a long-term injury over the Christmas period. It was going to be out for four weeks. We just had Cardwell returning from an injury and in games every two or three days. We couldn't rely on him to do every single one of them. I didn't really have any feasible options when I looked through the scout reports and I didn't want to blow loads of money on a first team level player when we've just got Cardwell a new deal. So I went back to someone we had on loan last year and I just begged Wigan to let us have him for a month and they did. Josh Stones returned on the evening of Boxing Day. He has scored three goals in two appearances and it's not just the goals he scored, it's the manner of them and more importantly the timing of them which we'll look at in a moment. Josh Stones is writing his name into the temporary history books but let's go and have a look at the schedule to see why his addition has been so important. Because if we have a look at the results since you were last here, we are unbeaten, we've recovered from the Oldham defeat, and the first game after was a brilliant way to bounce back. But it's not been plain sailing over the festive period. A couple of draws we've had to cling on in there in certain games, and we might have a similar one against Eastley coming up on Tuesday night after this cup tie. But let's go through the games in order as there are some huge moments that we found in these matches. The first one against Fylde was easy and routine. We were four up at half time. We won it 5-0 in the end. Dakers got a brace. Powell, Stewart and Scott Morris all got one. Scott Morris again scoring a deflected goal. Something he did against Salford as well. Against Hartlepool we won 2-0 away from home. Stunning performance from start to finish. Brilliant playing through them going forward. Fantastic saves from ND. Parker was brilliant at the back and Erin and Dakers got a goal apiece. Against Kidderminster, routine home win, three goals to one. Jack Morehouse is coming of age. Him and Jack Kingdon have signed their new deals alongside Harry Cardwell now, and my word is he delivering. I've got to give him more football because every time he plays he's brilliant. He got a hat-trick there, it was a comfortable win, and Jack Morehouse risks being one of those players who maybe comes through the divisions with us. If we have a look at the FA Trophy third round, we rotated a bit away at Chelmsford, Dakers got two and Stewart got one. Two assists this time for Morehouse instead. And then against Boreham Wood on Boxing Day. A crucial result. A two-all draw as we came from behind after the hour mark. Two penalties for Quasi Appia. Turned the game around after Cardwell's early goal. But Dan Mooney was the man who delivered. Came on in a less than ideal position because of the injuries we had to Dakers. Leighton Stewart struggled a bit late on as well. But crucially, it was an unbeaten run continuing and a point on the board. Not as crucial though as the result at Chesterfield because if we have a look at this, Josh Stones came straight back in. He joined the club, he had to play because Dakers got injured. He got injured in the fourth minute of the match on Boxing Day as well. So Cardwell played 86 on his return. He was knackered as well. We didn't have Leighton Stewart fit. We managed to chuck a couple on the bench but we only had Josh Stones available. He came in, he played the whole game and he scored two goals including a 94th minute equaliser. I thought we lost it in the 91st. We'd fought so hard defensively. And then Ndeng and D, who'd been very good again throughout, made a big mistake near the end. Jack Morehouse was running on one leg at the end. Harry Taylor came off the bench and wasn't fully fit. 
and Erin had a yellow card and had to be careful. But Callum Powell set up a brilliant goal and Josh Stones scored the equaliser. That might be the most important goal that we ever score at this club. And Josh Stones, a man on a one-month emergency loan, is the man who had delivered the goal. So big shout out to him. Morehouse with a nerveless penalty in that game as well. Two young stars that will be remembered for that match. And it could be crucial, as you see from the top of the table. Against South Shields on New Year's Day, a bit more of a return to the standard efficient win. They did hold us for 70 minutes. They frustrated us. They didn't have a shot on target, but they were defensively resolute. In the end note, Will Ferry celebrated his new contract with a first goal for the club. And Josh Stones yet again popped up to secure the victory, this time off the bench. So thrilled that this season, as well as being unbeaten for a large portion of time, for producing good results and gritty displays with late goals, what we're also doing is being a bit more of a team. Last year we relied on probably Cardwell and a little bit Mooney to score all the goals for us. This year they're spread out. We've had runs also with better defensive displays and two or three clean sheets in a row as well. And that's something that's important for us in this National League Challenge. We know we've got a distraction with QPR today, but then we're away to 10th place Eastley. Gunthorpe at home is never a formality. Horrible FA Trophy draw at Hartlepool. Dagenham and Redbridge are good side. York in under new management. The former Notts County man Luke Williams. And then Altrincham away, we're up in third place. It is not an easy run of fixtures. But if we have a look at the table at the moment, it could not be tighter. An identical record between Southend and Chesterfield. 27 played, 60 points, 18 wins, 6 draws, 3 defeats. Are we on for a big title push? If Altrincham win their game in hand, they could be just one point behind. Their opportunity to win at home to Halifax today has been postponed due to the weather. And we've also got a very narrow advantage in goal difference. So we've conceded exactly the same as Chesterfield and just three less than Altrincham. In terms of goals, we've scored three more than Chesterfield. and Maybe that's crucial where we're spreading them out. But this is going to go right to the wire. What I'm delighted about is the fact that we are going to be in the playoffs. We are in that promotion mix at the very least. And we are in that group of three, four or five at the top. Don't rule out Oldham or Hartlepool just yet. But Chesterfield, as we predicted when they lost the playoffs last year, look like they're going to be the main one. And if we finish above them, I'll hedge my bets now and say that we'll be the champions if we do so. Let's go and get ahead to face QPR though, because this is a big game for us away from the distractions of the league. We have got 12,500 in at Loftus Road, a 4-4-2 for QPR. But that doesn't mean we're going to our home tactic. We are trying to protect our team. They've gone fairly strong by the looks of it. We've got Begovic, Norton Cuffey, Cook, Field, all expected to start. Ilias chair out wide with Dykes and Stansfield up front. This is a strong QPR team. Not sure why they were bottom of the championship. They're certainly not anymore though. They're up to 19th. They're pushing up the division. And that's going to make this even trickier. Because it means we're facing a QPR side. Who yeah, must be in pretty good form. Scored four at Sunderland on New Year's Day. Won four out of six in the championship last month. Losing only away at Leeds and Forest. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm a little bit more scared than I was when the draw was made. So let's go and get through to the team selection. This is the 11 that we've gone for. It's not completely our strongest team. And the reason is we've got a tough game on Tuesday. And we've got fatigue from New Year's Day as well. Getting out of the National League is the priority. This is a great day. But it is not the be all and end all. So as a result of that. Marcus Dakers is not risked on his return from injury. We've just got Page back to training after four months out. That'll be a big addition when he comes in. Morehouse has got a knock as well. There's one or two others out too. But it does mean that combined with the fatigue of Parker on the bench, Powell's not fully fit, Scott Morris struggling a bit. We've just had to shuffle the numbers because our Tuesday night game is away as well. We'll be playing the same tactic and we've got to look after certain people. So our team as a result of that today is Ollie Wright, who always comes in for the cup games in goal. Kingdon, Lomas and Kensdale the back three. Parker, of course, the man to miss out. Matheson and Ferry the wing backs, because then at the very least, Scott Morris and Haynes will be fit on Tuesday. Erin is joined by Nor Husin in the middle. Titchmarsh with a heavy match load, and as he's got more fatigued over the winter, he has started to decline in performance. So I thought it's a good game to give Husin a run out. He does deserve more football than he's getting. And it's a nice moment for him to play against big opposition. Hilton and Mooney are the two out wide. Hilton just starting to find form again. And Mooney has been brilliant in recent weeks behind his old mate Harry Cardwell up front. Let's go and get into it at Loftus Road. A real treat of a game for us here. 
Let's see if we can deliver a spectacular shock, but if not, it's been one hell of a ride. Well, a very strong squad for QPR as they look to continue their momentum here. They've been in good form, they're flying up the championship, and they want to go on a cup run too. We're going to get a few of the lads motivated, just encourage them into this one. There's no pressure on us at all. We're not expected to win away here. And if we can do what we did at Salford and maybe spring a surprise, we're going to look like the heroes. As we're seven minutes gone, our first highlight is QPR on the attack and us camped into our own half as Turns finds Cook in the centre circle. He goes wide to Norton Cuffey. We've got everyone behind the ball, but it's not stopping and finding space, is it? Cook to Norton Cuffey again. And this is the main aim for us, that they push their wing backs up, they try and overlap and then we catch them on the counter. But at the moment it's going the other way as Chair finds Dykes. Brilliant touch. Great goal. I mean, he's made Kensdale look silly there. And to be fair, Kensdale would be a sub for us if everyone was fit. He's our fourth choice centre half. Parker's not fit and we're playing three at the back today. Otherwise he wouldn't be near it. As Field gives the ball inside to Fox. He goes back the turns. It looks like it could be a long afternoon this. We've been very passive so far. And we do see this in the FA Cup a bit, don't we? Showing a bit too much respect. As Cardwell tries to play a 1-2 with Hilton. Under hits that by about 20 yards to be honest. And Stansfield gets away down the left hand side to Fox. He's got a chance to cross but goes back to chair. He shoots. Brilliant effort. Just wide of the post. Should have been two. It's been a brilliant start for QPR. And this is going to be a long day if we don't start pressing them. And we don't start believing in ourselves. Well, it's funny, isn't it? After half an hour, Dykes and Chair, the best players on the pitch. Who would have thought it? Moroccan and Scottish international. As Matheson finds Cardwell. Good run from Hilton. What a time it would be to return to form. He had Begovic scrambling, but it wasn't going to hit the target. And with five to the break, we're back at the other end with Ilias Chair. Corner kick to the back post. They've got big men up. Steve Cook wins it. Just too strong in there. But thankfully, it goes wide. If we get to half time at 1-0, I'm fairly happy. And I also think about going 4-4-2. Because in this tactic, yes, we've kept them fairly quiet. But we've offered next to nothing. So I think that's going to be the plan for this game. Can we keep it 1-0 till, say, 60-65 minutes? And then go out and attack them? Because then we've got the opportunity with fresh players off the bench, like Stewart, like Stones, to really press them and get aggressive. As we've got a corner with Hilton. We might not need to change to do it. Because up goes Kensdale. Oh, it's hit the post. It's hit the post from six yards on the header. Oh, it's a massive effort. There's a couple of tired players coming off for QPR. They're not looking particularly confident here. They probably thought they'd have the game won by now. As Mooney nicks it again, but Morton Cuffey gets in. Dykes will release his man, Jebison. Kingdom wins it. No referee. You've got that totally wrong. Oh, never. He's going to send him off. Well, now it's game over. That is a disgrace, referee. You have absolutely failed there. Now let's go and make some changes. We've got to make a decision. We're going to have to go back to the four and go 4 4 1, aren't we? It's the only way we're really going to survive here. Let's put Lomas back in the defence for Kingdon. Cardwell in the middle for now. It's going to change how we go about this. We're going to bring on Scott Morris at right back for Matheson just to give us a natural right back in that position. We're also going to go for Dan Mooney off, replaced by Ryan Haynes. Gives us a couple of more defensive-minded players on that side. Hilton will drop to a support duty. I might even take him off on a yellow, you know. I'm going to replace him with Callum Powell. We'll save the last two a few minutes, but Cardwell's not going to do 90. I've got to save him for the week. It's whether we go for the advance forward in behind, or whether we replace him like for like with Stones. As Garrett picks the ball up in the middle. Goes left to Fox. This is about staying in the game now. Fox gets to the wide area. Beats his man. Good cross in. Keeper comes. Flaps at it. And Duke McKenna should have scored. Sorry. Ollie Wright has not been convincing in goal. First game I don't think he's been complacent for as well. So I can't sound particularly impressed with a lone keeper. But he does quite well there. Smothers the ball in goal. And throws out pretty dodgily to Ryan Haynes. He works down the line. Imagine we nick a replay. A man down and a goal down. Cardwell picks it up. He's got support from Erin. He's looking for Cardwell again. He's forced wide though. Powell gets in. No way. Great save, Begovic. The offside flag is up. Cardwell's knackered. We've got 20 to go. I'm just going to rest him and Erin. We've got Tuesday night against Eastleigh. That's important. Let's get Josh Stones on. He is going to just cover the ground for the last 20 minutes or so. 
And we'll also bring off Earring for Harry Taylor. Titch Marsh again can keep being rested. And those two can go into more natural roles. There's the five subs. We've made them all now. And it's probably damage limitation with 11 v 10. But we come out of this with a 1-0 defeat in a game with relatively even stats. Apart from possession. We have to consider this a success. Because we've fought really hard. We've pushed them all the way. And you know what? We've by no means embarrassed ourselves. This is the stage of an FA Cup tie that's a worry though. Because we've got to the latter stages. We've got tired legs. Although Taylor's nicked it. I was going to say we might be at risk of letting in a second. Powell puts the ball in. There's no one up there. Stones can't even get up in support. As Turns gets the ball out from the back. Finds Garrett who can bring it forward for QPR. Options over the top but plays wide to chair. Who's been the difference maker so far. Finds Callum Powell intercepts it. He's got Morris up the stones but he has no support. And that's where we're missing that advance forward. But Powell picks it up. Oh if we nick a replay. I'll be bouncing off the walls. Powell goes alone. Brilliant run. Shots over the bar. Great effort. He's made a real difference since coming on. He's not been able to deliver the goal. We've got the higher expected goals. We've had more chances since we've gone down to 10 men than they've had. And unfortunately, it's a Moroccan international providing a goal for a Scottish international that has cost us a place in the FA Cup fourth round draw. A brilliant effort at 1-0. And now we've got to make it count because on Tuesday night, we're going to have some problems with fatigue and suspension. And we're going to have to find a way around it. Back in a moment to face Eastley. A return to reality. Well, it's fitness test time. And after the near miss on Saturday, we are back to the bread and butter. It looks like Dakers, Morehouse and Matheson have all made it for this one. So I'm going to have a stronger team to pick from. But we're away to a tough side. The only good news that we've got from Saturday is that while we were playing QPR, Chesterfield were in National League action. And on this rare occasion, they drop points at home to play off Chase in Ebbsfleet. A two-all draw there from 2-0 up as well gives us a little bit of a chance. If we win this, we can go top. Are Altrincham in action tonight? No, they're not. So this is a real opportunity. Let's go and pick our team. Same formation. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. Well, we are at a stage of the season, particularly with the one-month loan of Stones, where we don't need to be taking silly risks at the minute. As a result of that, Marcus Dackers is not in the squad today. Will Ferry is left out with fatigue as well. Jack Earing exactly the same. And Lewis Page not wrist in the side. What that means today with Kingdon's suspension as well is that there are a few changes to this team. And Deng and D returns in goal as you would expect. Parker returns to the back three but instead of Kingdon rather than for Ken Stout as we would have hoped. We've got Haynes in at left wing back for the tired Ferry. Howe in on the right wing who looked good off the bench. Hilton just can't find form this year. And then Morehouse and Titchmarsh all change in the middle as we rest the two that played at the weekend. Harry Taylor is on the bench just to give us versatility. Two strikers in case we need to change the game because Cardwell's knackered as well. And then Scott Morris and Hilton just to give us some width in case we need to stay in this formation. Let's go and get into it away at Eastley. They must have played at the weekend. They were away at York. No, they weren't. That was on New Year's Day. So they've had six days off. They're going to be in better nick physically than us. Let's go and get into it and see if the quality shows or if we're going to get pegged back away on the south coast. Well, here we go then. And immediately, I notice a couple of experienced names in this Eastley team. Firstly, Pete Wilde, the current Barrow manager in real life who had previously been in the National League with Halifax. Then you've got skipper Jake Taylor, who was part of Stevenage's League 2 promotion last season. And Lee Hodson on the bench, a former Northern Irish international. Let's go and get through the dressing room. Tell the lads to prove a point. We've got most of them inspired and motivated. But if I'm being honest, we need to get this job done in the first half. Because we don't have the fitness to make it last. Now, it's not quite a realistic view of the Eastie pitch. Where they've got that one massive stand behind the goal. But there is one pretty big one there in fairness. And they've gone fairly cautious. Yes, they've got the three in the middle going forward. But they've also got a back seven basically against us. And we're going to have to try and penetrate it, which will be tricky. But with Morehouse making those runs from midfield, it does essentially give us a front four. It's whether we can handle it defensively. We've got a free kick with Dan Mooney. Hasn't scored one for a while. Now would be a good time. Oh, it's off the woodwork. The rebound to Parker. That's just as good. That is just as good as scoring direct from it. Back out to Parker. His first goal for South End. A really crucial one. We had the same with Ferry against South Shields. We had the same last month with Josh Stones coming back against Chesterfield. 
And that is a huge goal. The only shot on target so far. And Harrison Parker, the one of that back three who was rested at the weekend. We have extended his loan till the end of the year. He's another John Still special find. And my God, if we could keep him beyond this year, we're going to have a good run of it wherever we are. Harry Cardwell is knackered already. Haven't even got to half time yet. That's a bit of a concern from a physical point of view. We have scored with the only shot on target. Not been a glorious display. Not been one of our free-flowing attacking performances. We've had games like this this season. And we've just managed to nick either 1-0 wins or one all draws and keep those unbeaten runs going. And we're going to have to try and do that tonight as well. I'm going to take Cardwell off in a minute. Stones is only here for a month. We don't need to protect him that much. Let's get him on through the middle. We've got a home game at the weekend, so Stuart will need to be fresh for that. Stones doesn't have to worry. And then the rest of the team we'll look at now. I could do all of the front three, but I'm not going to. I'm going to replace Hilton for Dan Mooney, who's tired. Power will switch to the left, and then it saves us a sub for later on. We can bring Taylor on for one of the midfield too. We can go a bit more cautious. But for now, we've got to hold on, as it's a long ball from Eastley. They've resorted to going direct. Jesus! What was that for? They're complaining that he was time-wasting with an injury. That's hilarious. Josh Stone's on after 10 minutes, and he's ruined it now. I spent the whole first 10 minutes of the episode talking about what a hero he was, and he's gone and done that. So what I'm going to do as a result, I'm going to stay strikerless, but I'm going to keep Hilton there, and I'm going to put an inside forward on attack for Powell, just to give us someone making a run centrally. I'm then going to take off the tired Morehouse, who again has been brilliant. I'm going to put Taylor as the centre midfielder on defend, which is his preferred role. And then Titchmarsh will be a deep line playmaker on defend. Again, just to give us that solidity. We'll almost just let those two up top run. And we'll keep the rest of them defending. Not going to look for the overlap. We're going to put the fullbacks probably to defensive duty soon. But for now, I don't want to go two backs to the wall. Because I don't want to force too much pressure on us with 10 men. We're going to reduce the attacking whip slightly. Because we've got one of the wingers cutting in. We're not looking to be so aggressive with the wing backs. But if we can hold on for this one, it's a great result. Given the fact he's now going to be suspended, bar the FA Trophy tight, that might be Stone's final appearance. Yes, it's not finished well, as we've scored another. How has that gone in? Back across goal from Parker. Titchmarsh directed it towards goal. It was nowhere near going in. It hit someone, then it hit another defender and just bobbled over the line. And with 10 minutes to go, we're tuning it up as a result. That's hilarious. We're going to get wing backs on to defend. As I was saying a minute ago, Josh Stones will still be remembered for that Chesterfield game. And if this one doesn't cost us, it will be forgotten very quickly. It's an own goal for the goalkeeper in the end. Can we have another little look at that quickly? The ball comes in from the left from Hilton. Low mass across goal. Pitch marsh there. It's almost Shawnee Bear, isn't it, who hits it off the goalkeeper. And it just hits him and goes in. A really weird one. Two minutes to go plus stoppage time. And Eastley are throwing everything forward with Hodson. This is the problem being this deep. We're giving space at the edge of the box. They've got a former Northern Irish international. Not the best player in the world, but he's got experience. He's got quality on the ball. And he's calm and he scored a goal. Now, if we throw this win away, it'd be a disaster. Though Hilton straight in from the kickoff. Oh, that is unbelievable. We've been waiting for Sonny Hilton to wake up and find form. What a ball from Titchmarsh. And I've got to say... I'm looking at that action there and I'm thinking, do we need to get a playmaker in a team regularly? Because he's got the ball from the kickoff there, found a pinpoint ball to the winger in behind. And where there wasn't a striker up there, it's actually made the line a bit higher and helped us out. As Hilton nicks it again, what a time to come of age and be a hero. And this goes back to what I was saying at the start of the episode. We're spreading out the heroics this year. Everyone's popping up with a goal. Everyone's popping up with that match winning or match saving moment. And everyone's looking like a star at some point. That's got to be offside. It's over the bar anyway. It doesn't matter. What a win. In the circumstances, what a win. We score from the kickoff when it looks like we're in danger. Josh Stones does something ridiculous. But we get away with it. We win 3-1. We return to the top of the National League. Let's have a look at when we're going to be back. Well, again, it will probably be determined by whether we get through in the FA Trophy and who we face, because last year that became an important part of our run-in. But this season, I feel we might be prioritising the opposite and resting players for the Cup, ready for these league games, because the title run-in is going to be big. 
We've shown great signs. We've got grit. We've got character. There's a never say die attitude in this team. I'm looking at this run in mid March. We've got Yeovil and York, who are both on the edge of the playoffs at the minute. Newport, of course, were relegated in game, as were Harrogate. It's actually a pretty horrible run in, with Ebbsfleet and Oldham in the playoffs after that, and Hartlepool on the final day of the season. So we will come back at some point around the start of March, about halfway between now and the end of the year. But what a day it was. A really good effort of QPR in the Cup. Maybe a concern that we've suddenly had two red cards in two games, both real discipline. But I'm not going to criticise this team for now. They're doing a wonderful job. We've got key players tied down to new contracts. We've got good players in the side delivering and everyone stepping up when it really matters, which is all I can ever ask for. If you enjoyed this one, a narrow defeat at QPR and a great win away at Eastley, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments if you think we'll do it. Two points separate us and Chesterfield at the top. We've played both of our league games against each other now. It's a race to the wire up between two top sides. If you want to stay up to date and find out if we do it, then subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Can we make it to Wembley in the FA Trophy final again? Or will we get pegged back by Hartlepool next time? We'll find out all the answers as we return tomorrow at the exact same time as normal. We're going to be staying on double headers for the rest of this week before rotating them from Monday onwards. I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the season. I'll see you tomorrow as it continues. In the meantime, though, the head coach is in the eye above. And if you didn't see yesterday's transfer deadline day special, just go and watch it. Because if you wanted to get an indicator of how FM24's headline features are working, whether the AI is recruiting more sensibly and what the pitfalls and benefits are, then that video perfectly shows it without any intent at all. We'll be back with that series later today. You can also find the Twitch channel and the football podcast in the eye above. Championship predictions for this weekend as well as our Premier League preview for Luton and Liverpool. There's also a QPR manager special up there as well as they've changed hands in real life this week. But thank you very much for watching. Your support, as always, is appreciated. And we'll see you back here tomorrow as the title race continues in the National League. This one's going to be tight.